This is CLS All in One, and today I'm going to show you how to install a car stereo. I'm going to be replacing the stock stereo with an aftermarket double din stereo. This is a 2000 Nissan Xterra, and the stock stereo is already a double din, so that's going to make this job a little bit easier. So I'm going to be installing a double din car stereo made by Dual. Uh, it has quite a few features. It's got Bluetooth capabilities, video inputs, video outputs, a DVD player. Uh, it's a pretty nice stereo for the price. It was only 99 bucks. So to hook this up, I'm going to be using a stereo connector. And what this is, is a wire harness that connects to your stock radio wire harness. And these connections keep you from cutting any of your stock radio wires, and everything's color-coded on these connectors, so you know what wires are what. In some vehicles, if you have OnStar, or a premium Bose sound system, or another feature that's similar to that, then you're going to have to buy a module to retain those features. And Scotch makes many adapters and modules to retain those types of features. And for most vehicles, you're going to have to buy a stereo dash kit. And what these kits do is they change the size of your radio opening. So your aftermarket stereo will fit in that opening just right. And in some vehicles, you replace the entire dash piece that surrounds the radio. Some vehicles might also require an antenna adapter. A lot of the stock radios have a different antenna plug-in than your aftermarket radios. So on most newer vehicles, your dash trim pieces just snap into place. And may also have a couple screws that secure it too. To remove the dash kit, you want to make sure you use a dash trim removal tool. That way you don't damage your dash, and these are usually made out of nylon or plastic. This dash trim piece has a couple screws that are hidden behind the ashtray. So I'm going to remove those first, and then use my pry tool to pop off the dash piece. Also, your dash trim piece may be connected to something like a cigarette lighter, so you'll have to unplug that also. Now it's time to remove the actual stereo. There's four screws that secure this one. But before we take those out, we're going to go ahead and unplug the battery because we're going to have exposed wiring here in a few and we don't want to short anything out. Now we can go ahead and safely remove the stereo. Once your stereo is loose, there's going to be a couple more connections on the back of your stereo. There's usually at least one connection plus your antenna cable. Normally your connections are very easy to unplug. Usually there's just a tab that you push in to unplug them. Now this should be the last we see of this stereo. Goodbye stock stereo. Here's a look at our stereo connection adapters, and we're just going to plug those into our stock radio wire harnesses. They're just going to snap into place. These connection adapters actually have two more plug-ins, but that's for a stock amplifier. This vehicle does not have an amplifier, so I won't be using those. So here's a look at the stereo we're going to be installing, and we're going to take a look at the back of it here. As you notice here, it's got all types of inputs. It's got inputs and outputs for video, uh, it's got an input for reverse camera, but for this installation I'm just going to be using the main wire harness which is going to be right here. So now it's time to splice in our aftermarket car stereo wire harness to our adapters. Your car stereo connection adapters are going to include paperwork that's going to tell you what each individual wire is. Everything is color coded so it makes it easy. For your aftermarket car stereo wire harness, it may be listed in multiple places. It may be listed on the wire harness itself. It also may be listed on the car stereo. And if it's not listed in either one of those places, it's going to be in your manual. Again, everything is color coded, so it makes it very easy to determine which wire is what. All aftermarket stereos are going to have three main connections. You're going to have your 12 volt ignition, which is usually a red wire. You're going to have your constant power, which is usually a yellow wire. And you're going to have your ground, which is usually a black wire. And here's a look at the wiring diagram on the aftermarket stereo wire harness. So this wire harness also has connections for four different speakers, front, left, and right and rear left and right. It's also got connections for power antenna and many other connections including connections for reverse camera, connections for your steering wheel control, illumination or your dimmer switch, and remote turn on for an amplifier. Your vehicle may not have all these options so you're going to have wires that are probably going to be unused. For those wires you just simply leave them unhooked. So now I'm going to start splicing the two radio harnesses together. Usually your color codes are the same but always double check your wiring diagrams to make sure you're hooking up to the right wire. And normally the end of your wire should be pre-stripped already. If they're not, you're going to have to use a pair of wire strippers to strip about half inch off the end of each wire. And to actually make the connection, you can either use butt connectors or you can just simply twist the wires together. After twisting together, I use electrical tape to insulate it. Then I simply just repeat the process for every wire that I'm going to hook up. And remember, only hook up the wires that you need. If your car doesn't have a power antenna, then there's no need to hook up the power antenna wire. A 
Okay, now I got all my wire splicing complete, so now I'm going to go ahead and plug back in my battery and test out my car stereo and make sure everything works before I go any farther. A lot of car stereos that have a DVD player or a CD player are going to have screws that secure that drive into place. You simply just have to remove those screws before you install it. Most aftermarket stereos also have a mounting cage that allows you to mount the stereo easily. You simply just loosen the tabs on each side of the cage and it pops right off. So this cage will actually secure to the dash and then the stereo is going to secure to this cage. So now I'm going to go ahead and plug in my stereo and power it up and do a quick test to make sure everything's working before I put the dash back together. So you want to make sure when you're testing to test all your speakers. Make sure your front and rear speakers are working correctly and your fade and balance is working correctly. And if you have any issues, more than likely it's just a loose connection and an easy fix. So everything looks good with my stereo, so I'm going to go ahead and unhook it and start putting my dash back together. And here's a look at that mounting cage we took off earlier. And we're either going to mount that directly to the radio dash trim panel, or we're going to mount that to an aftermarket stereo dash kit. And these kits will come with everything you need to mount your stereo properly. For this particular vehicle, the mounting cage almost fits in the stock dash panel. All you have to do is a little trimming with the utility knife to make it fit perfect. So I'm shaving about 1 16th of an inch off of each side with the utility knife. And that'll be enough to make the cage fit just right. So I got a nice tight fit for the mounting cage. Now I just need to push it all the way in to where it's flush with the face of the radio dash trim panel. So here's a look at how the mounting cage should fit. You should have a nice tight fit all the way around. Once you have proper fitment of the cage, it's time to go ahead and push these tabs down. You want to push the tab that's closest to the dash trim panel on the back side. So right here I'm going to push the tab down and also right here. And I'm going to do the same thing at the top. And what that's going to do is it's going to secure it to the radio dash trim panel. And there's also some tabs located on the sides of the mountain cage that I'm going to press in also. So here's a look at the tabs pushed out. Now that these tabs are pushed out, the mounting cage is secured to the radio dash trim panel. So now it's time to mount my dash panel back in place. Be sure to grab your wires and pull those through the opening before you push your panel back into place. And also don't forget to reconnect any of your other connections like the cigarette lighter. Now I'm going to go ahead and connect my stereo and insert it into the mounting cage. You'll want to push it in until it clicks and locks in place into the mounting cage. And if you ever need to remove your stereo for any reason, your new stereo should come with a key that you simply stick in a slot to remove it. So we're almost done now. The only thing left to do now is to install this mounting cage trim plate. And this should come supplied with your new stereo. Well, we're finally done now. I'm going to power this up, listen to my favorite music, and head down the road. Thanks for watching. This is CLS All in One. If you'd like to hear more from me, please like and subscribe.